person. Imagine a million dollars. Did you know that the standard issue Air Force fighter plane costs a hundred and twenty million dollars? One! One! And they line these things up on the runways of various airfields a hundred and twenty deep. We are completely paralyzed or unable to perceive the disparity in the way the money is spent. Uh, if, if someone were to give or had even the power to give, because private wealth is not like governmental wealth. If you're a private person and you control a fortune of $500 million, you are among the thousand richest people in the world. If you're a government with a budget of $500 million, you have your hand in everybody's pocket around the world because you're a beggar. If, if someone were to give to the New Age the price of one fighter plane, and half the governments in the world have dozens of these things, that $120 million would write a ticket to rebirth for every center in the state all the movies, films, pilgrimages, conferences, conscience raising, experimental programs of fringe scientific research, all of that would be prosecuted to a glorious end. The, the amazing thing is, we who have no money have all the ideas. <laughs> if, if the cost of one fighter plane were spent on the promotion of ideas to save the world, the world would probably advance 50% closer to its own salvation. So what is the matter with us? Why are we so perverse? What is it that drives the inertia of these dominator systems? Because we're not asking for half the military budget, not even close, and yet we're not being cut any slack at all, and it doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, people love to talk about the new freedom in the Soviet Union and how exhilarating it must be. My hope for the Soviet Union is that they shame us with the level of their freedom of discourse and their ability to look their past in the face and uh, and reassess where they are going. So I I this is not a plea for a million dollars. This is a plea for consideration of the perverseness of the way we set our priorities. Uh, you know the world can be saved. It's simply a matter of diverting I would say five percent of GNP to do it. Well, only a terminally psychopathic person would refuse to divert 5% of their energy flow toward their own salvation. If we can't get our act together to do that, I think the calm and cool judgment of Gaia Almighty is who needed such clowns? <laughs> I'll hang out with the octopi, the dolphins, the butterflies, and the termite nests. I don't need this headache. You know, I don't need acid rain. I don't need strontium in the environment. I don't need extraction of petroleum products and tons of junk in orbit in order to foster what? Shakespeare? There hasn't been a Shakespeare for 500 years. These clowns aren't producing anything. H-bombs don't make it in the Gaian scale of values. So the point here is tremendously perverse misdirection of resources. A tremendous patience with institutions that have proven that they are either ineffective or actually the enemy. You know, institutions like uh, the Brazilian government, uh, large pharmaceutical companies, uh, capitalism, uh, so forth and so on. Why are we so patient when our world, our children's world, the world of all future life on earth hangs in the balance? I think that uh, 
the time is really coming when people are going to have to stand up and be counted. And I hope when you leave here this afternoon that you will feel uh, that our group experience has given you permission to come out of the environmental closet, the psychedelic closet, uh, the caring for the fate of the human family closet, because all of these things are either dismissed as perverse, dangerous, or airheaded. And obviously, they are not. This is the most serious business that we could be about. This is what we were born to do. It must be, because if this is not what we were born to do, then what we were born to do is witness the death of the only living world we know. And I, for one, am not ready to stand mute witness to that kind of an atrocity.